How's it going guys? This is Nick from ReVenture Consulting. This is the video you have all been waiting for. I'm officially calling it as of the second week of June 2021. The US housing market crash has started. That's right, we've passed the peak US housing bubble and from this point on, things are gonna start to go south and they're gonna start to go south really, really fast. How do I know this? Well, there's three real-time indicators that I'm looking at right now that are all pointing in a very negative direction for the US housing market. And these are indicators that you're, if you're a home buyer, if you're a real estate investor, or if you're someone who's thinking about whether you should sell your home right now and potentially rent, these are indicators you need to be tracking because right now they're saying that the housing market has now turned and will start going down. The first of these indicators, which we're gonna talk about in the video, is mortgage purchase applications. The number of people submitting an application for a mortgage so they can purchase a home. That number, after climbing for most of 2020 and early 2021, has now cratered over the last two months down to mid-2019 levels. So what that means is the demand for homes is declining sharply as we speak. The second thing that's going on is, just as that demand is declining, the construction of new homes is surging. So that's right, new home construction over the last 12 months is at 15-year highs. And this is, of course, against everything you're reading in the news, which is saying home builders aren't building. That couldn't be further from the truth. Home builders are building, and they're building a lot, and they're building a lot just as the demand for homes is declining. That's a nasty combination. The third thing and the third indicator we're gonna talk about today is lumber prices. That's right, the elephant in the room, lumber prices. You guys have heard a lot about this. Well, lumber prices, just like mortgage purchase applications after surging for most of the last six months, well, now they are in free fall. Lumber prices are crashing, and that signifies huge instability for the housing market going forward. In this video, we're gonna address each of these indicators one by one. I'm gonna explain why they're important, why they're pointing to a decline in the US housing market, and also gonna tell you guys how you can look at these indicators on your own so you can track them week by week. All right, let's get into the data. So I suspect off the bat, a lot of you are skeptical of me saying the housing crash has started. After all, if you look around, you still see a lot of cases of like bidding wars, huge cash offers over ask, a lot of still froth in the real estate market. And I'll say, yes, that stuff is still happening. And that stuff will continue to happen, especially for really nice properties in good locations. Those type of properties will still have a lot of interest. But what we're starting to see right now is a softening in the housing market. Days on the market for properties is going up. The amount of price cuts is going up. Properties are starting to sit longer, especially if they're not you know, the cream of the crop property. And that's because fundamentally, the demand for homes is plummeting right now. After going up, after experiencing a huge surge after COVID, which was always gonna be temporary, as I said in part two of my housing crash series, that was always gonna be a temporary surge. Well, that temporary surge is over and now mortgage purchase applications are at the same levels that they were in early to mid 2019. That's right, new home demand has gone down to early to mid 2019 levels. That's something you're not really hearing reported in the news right now, but we know it from the Mortgage Bankers Association Mortgage Purchase Application Index. And we're looking at that index represented on this graph. And what it shows is basically the demand, the, the demand for new mortgages for purchasing homes over the last three years. And uh, this index kind of in this range ranges from about 210 to 350. And the, the number on the index isn't as important as the movements in the index around this yellow line, which is kind of the long run average. What you can see is that in 2018, the mortgage purchase index was below this yellow line, meaning that there was below average demand for new home purchases. And not coincidentally, 2018 was a bad year for the US housing market. Um, appreciation was around two to 3%, barely above inflation in both markets. What we then saw was a normalization in 2019. Mortgage purchase demand kind of went back up to normal, normal levels. And then we have the huge decline that occurred April 2020, kind of the first month that COVID hit. And then, wow, record expansion in mortgage purchase application demand up above this 320 level, basically from June 2020 to April 2021. And it's this period here, which is like the housing bubble, really, that we've been experiencing over the last nine months. Why have we experienced this bubble? Well, there was a huge surge in demand for homes, and you can see that uh, represented in the mortgage purchase index. Again, someone wants to buy a home, 
They go to a bank, they apply for a mortgage to buy that home. There was a spike in, the, in, in that statistic and that's why there was so much home demand and craziness in the housing market and the last fall and winter. But then what you see here, if you guys are enjoying the data in this video, please hit that like button. When you do that, it just gets me a little bit more exposure, helps YouTube promote my video, so hit that like button. Additionally, make sure to comment. I wanna hear what your perspective is on the US housing market. Are you trying to buy? Are you trying to sell? Are you a renter? What are you experiencing right now? When you guys comment, it makes me more informed, makes these videos better. All right, let's get back to the video. Starting really fundamentally in March was that this level started tanking. Started tanking down all the way to first, second week of June, we're at 262 on this index, which is back below the long-term average. And it's basically back below to the levels experienced in early to mid-2019. So yeah, let me repeat that one more time, guys. The huge surge in housing demand and prices that we've experienced over the last month can really be attributed to this surge in demand for homes and mortgages that occurred in the second half of 2020 and the first couple months of 2021. Well, that demand is back down below the long-term baseline, and I have a feeling it has further down to go, potentially getting back to these 2018 levels of demand. So in mid-April, I put out a video, uh, the second part of my U.S. housing crash series on how we were going to run out of buyers in the U.S. housing market. And the basic idea was that the surge in home demand from COVID was always going to be temporary. Because basically what happened was that in a very short amount of time, a lot of people, wealthy people, accelerated their decision to buy a home. A lot of people who would have probably bought over the span of two or three years, maybe they would have bought in 2023 or something, they decided to buy in 2020 all of a sudden because of COVID. The problem is COVID had harsh economic consequences. The U.S. is down 7 million jobs from its pre-COVID high. And quite frankly, the underlying economy is, it stinks. It's not good. And so at some point, we're going to run out of these wealthy buyers who all decided to buy at the same time. We're gonna go back to a more normal level or potentially even a below baseline level where now we have super high prices. The wealthy buyers have already bought. So now the burden of sustaining these home prices is on lower and middle income families. And that's exactly what we're starting to see in the mortgage purchase application data. The unsustainable nature of the post COVID home demand surge is running out. And don't be surprised if that demand continues to decline with home prices at their record highs, especially relative to wages right now. Now, obviously, declining demand is a problem for the housing market. Think about it. All these people have geared up their expectations in the housing market for continued record demand. But demand is now back at early to mid 2019 levels when no one was really talking about the housing market that much. That's problematic in and of itself. The amount of buyers is way down. But what's even more problematic is that as the amount of buyers is down, the amount of new construction is way up, right? Basically, builders said to themselves, because of the frenzied nature and appreciation in the housing market in the second half of 2020 and first couple months of 2021, builders said, all right, now's the time. We need to get out there, build new homes, build new condo projects, build new apartment buildings. Let's get this housing inventory out there. The problem is it takes like a while to build. You know, it takes often like 12 to 18 months to build an apartment building or a big housing development. So these builders are now building at 15 year highs, just as the demand for new homes is plummeting. That's not a good combination for the housing market. All right, guys, so in this graph, we're looking at the number of housing starts, the number of housing units in America where they put the shovel in the ground. That means they've started building Right? This isn't just a permit being pulled. They've started building these projects. And this is data that comes from um, HUD as well as the U.S. Census Bureau. They update it each month. And we're looking at the trailing 12-month numbers here. And let's just go back to like April 2017. We can see that housing starts over the previous 12 months in America were about 1.3 million. So we're building about 1.3 million new housing units in America. It was about like 70, 75% single-family homes, 25 to 30% apartment units. And we can see that this figure stayed pretty stable. It kind of accelerated a little bit, but stayed pretty stable through 2019. Like there was about a 5% increase in housing starts from 2017 to 2019. So, you know, that reflects like moderate increases in demand for homes. And, you know, they're, they're slowly but surely, builders are slowly but surely increasing their housing supply that they're building. But then, whoa, let's look at the last two years. We see starting really in late 2019, actually, there started to be a surge in home building. There was a brief dip 
in the couple months after COVID, and then wow, basically over the last nine to 10 months, just straight up, up to all the way, 1.6 million housing starts over the previous 12 months in America. And I, I guys want you to just burn this into your brain for all the people who keep hearing that like builders aren't building. Now, that's not true. Yes, they are. 1.6 million housing starts over the previous 12 months. That's the most we've seen in America in over 15 years. And it represents a 17% increase from the levels that we saw two years prior in 2019. A 17% increase in home construction is a massive jump in only two years. Like we saw how it was a 5% increase from 2017 to 2019. Well, we have a 17% increase from 2019 to 2020. And the thing about these housing starts is that they reflect when a shovel is put into the ground to start construction. They don't reflect when a housing unit is completed. And this is the rub. It takes anywhere from six to 18 months typically to complete a housing unit, depending on the scope. If it's just like a simple home that they're building on its own lot, they can do that in six months. If it's a bigger housing development or you know, if it's a condo building, that takes 12 to 18. So this surge that we've seen over the last six months in housing starts, we actually haven't seen the impact on inventory yet. Like that's gonna really come down the pike towards the end of 2021. Over the next six months or so, we're gonna start to see all these new housing starts turn into completed homes and apartments. And then really by early 2022, we're gonna to start to see big increases in newly built inventory. And so this is the crazy thing. Just as home demand is declining, housing starts are going up. Doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand that that's bad for the housing market. And that's one of the reasons right now where all existing home sales have declined four months in a row. It's one of the reasons why active listings have gone up four months in a row, why the number of price cuts has gone up four months in a row. It's because of this declining demand, increased supply relationship. This incre increased supply, this is something I talked about in part one of my housing crash series, which came out two months ago. More and more builders are building to try to react to the crazy surge in demand because of COVID, but that surge in demand was always gonna be temporary. So we're gonna be left with a lot of inventory in six to 12 months with no one to buy it. So now let's link this to lumber prices, right? We have demand declining, we have supply going up, and then we have lumber prices over here. And it's actually amazing how much lumber prices have infiltrated the narrative of the housing market over the last six to nine months. And basically like there's a new news article every day explaining how because of higher lumber prices, they say, the US housing market will just continue to appreciate. That's kind of been the argument that's been sown. And they've also tried to claim, which is incorrect, that because of higher lumber prices, builders aren't building. As we saw a second ago, that's wrong. Builders are building now more than ever. But that higher lumber price has really been used as a scare tactic to try to scare people into buying homes. Now that lumber prices are crashing, which is what they're doing, now that lumber prices are crashing, expect the narrative to go into reverse. People have now been conditioned to look at lumber prices as an indicator of where the housing market's going. Lumber prices have gone down by about 30% over the last month and a half. They're gonna to continue to go down. And with that, the narrative on the US housing market is gonna turn very negative. And you guys can see the movement in lumber prices really since October, 2020, which is when prices were close to their long-term average at $478 per what's called 1,000 board feet. 1,000 board feet is like the metric they use to quote lumber prices. It was at 478 in October 2020, which was close to the long-term average. And then you can see it kind of just incrementally increased, 840 by December, 1,000 by February. And then it was really up through early May where it peaked at around 1,700 per 1,000 board feet. And that was a 300% increase over the long-term average. And it was really in this period where, yeah, I mean, it was justified to be freaked out about the increase in lumber prices but since then, they've started plummeting. We're down now to 1,100, which is still well above the long-term average, but we're basically in kind of a free fall right now as far as lumber prices go. And that's because the amount of like DIY home projects, people building decks, people building expansion on their home, that's gone way down. Um, a lot of like discretionary projects that people make up a large demand for lumber just aren't happening right now because no one's gonna build a deck right, when lumber prices are this expensive. So they're destined to go down and they're gonna keep going down. They're gonna go down further. They're gonna go down to 1,000. They're gonna go down to 900. And as that happens, the narrative that got spun about lumber prices pushing the housing market up is gonna flip into reverse.
And this narrative-based thinking is, is a huge part of the housing market where people continually try to find a justification for why the bubble is going to continue. And if you've watched my other videos, you know that the number one thing that uh, shows the sign of a bubble is when home prices escalate faster than wages and income. And that's something that's been happening in almost every market in America. And it's inescapable that at some point, home prices are going to come back down to wages and income. The whole lumber argument was always a red herring. People somehow tried to claim that because maybe 500,000 to 750,000 new housing units that were being built over the previous six months were more expensive, that the 81 million housing units in America more generally were gonna be more expensive. And of course, that was a ridiculous argument. But the point is, is that lumber got firmly entrenched in the narrative of the housing market over the last six months. And now the price is starting to go down. And now that people are seeing that there's a decline in demand for homes, and now that new home building is surging to record levels, and now that the eviction and foreclosure moratoriums are rolling off at the end of June, all of these things are happening at once in June. And expect to see a vastly different perspective coming out of the media, coming out of realtors' mouths on the U.S. housing market starting later this month, starting in July. And you're already starting to see the softening. As I said, existing home sales down four months in a row. Active listings up four months in a row. Price cuts up four months in a row. So we are definitely out of the worst of it. The worst of it has passed. And as we continue into 2021, we're going to see a softer and softer market. Expect inventories to start going up. Over the next three months, the amount of homes on the market are going to start going up. I would think it's probably going to take another three months after that for home prices to start going down in a meaningful way. So maybe we start to see price declines at the end of 2021. However, good news for you guys, for you buyers out there, I think you're going to get some relief pretty soon as far as inventory goes. And then if you have the ability to wait it out until late 2021, early to mid 2020, then you're going to start to see some price relief as well. In the meantime, you're going to want to be tracking these three real-time indicators. Again, it's mortgage purchase applications, it's housing starts, and it's lumber prices. These three things are going to really dictate where the housing market goes uh, fundamentally on the first two and from a narrative-driven perspective on the third. And so you're going to want to track these. I'm going to have links to the sources of this data in the description. You're going to want to make sure to check those out. The mortgage purchase data gets updated every single week by the Mortgage Bankers Association. The housing start data gets updated every Every single month by the US Census and HUD and then the lumber price data is actually updated every single day so these are really real-time indicators where if you're if you're looking for guidance right if you're trying to make a decision about when and where to buy or if you should sell and you want real-time indicators these three are what you need to look at all right guys I hope you guys have enjoyed this video for those of you who stuck with me over the last couple months you've seen my videos leading up to this and it's now finally kind of a relief to see real-time data start to confirm our suspicions about the instability and unsustainable nature of the US housing market I think things are gonna get a lot better for buyers over the next three six and twelve months of course as I like to say real estate is local there's actually no such thing as the US housing market we really have like 500 different housing markets with all the metro areas across the country. So you need to also understand what's going on in your market. Make sure to check my video history. I put out a new video every single Wednesday on a new deep dive into a new specific city and market across America. I've done about 25 so far. So chances are I probably have done your city already. If I haven't, make sure to request it. Additionally, if you guys like this video, please make sure to hit the like button. I spent a lot of time putting this data together for you. In return, all I ask is hit that like button. Also make sure to comment. I want to know what you're experiencing in the housing market right now. Are you trying to buy? Are you trying to sell? Are you trying to rent? What are you seeing? When you comment, it makes me more informed. Additionally, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss these videos going forward. On Sunday, I have a new video coming out talking about how California and specifically Californians are inflating the U.S. housing bubble and how they're going to actually cause the crash, which has already started to occur. So you're not going to want to miss that. All right, guys, until Sunday, this is Nick from ReVenture Consulting signing off. Oh.